Hello, Matt. It is the 23rd of June. So, I think this is becoming a second location for me, to be honest. I'm just down here so often now. Um, I might as well record down here where the lighting is better, because you can actually see my eyes. Way basically, my system for judging if you can see me is if you can, if I can see my eyes, I'll consider that successful editing, um, or sex, successful lighting, even while editing. Um, and for the last, uh, well, good part of this year, I've not been able to see my eyes, so yeah, I prefer this angle because the light from my laptop lights up my eyes, and also that light's coming in hitting the side of my face, and we have lights above hitting them, so yeah. Um, lighting wise I think this um, place is better the only problem is is that I don't have a tripod and you, you can't see as much we could just see the curtain um, that's about it right so I won't act like I understand it uh, because I don't because I'm not old enough yet um, only three months though so yeah if it happened three months later I would be able to partake in this um, but either way, um, the EU referendum is well was today. Um, it's prob I think the polls are now shut, and they might have even revealed a couple of the results or something. I don't even know how it works. But either way, yeah, um, that was today. I won't act like I understand it, but um, it's a pretty big deal. I'll throw my little um, go into the water like stone in the water here, and I'll say that I, honestly, my laptop has just gone to sleep. Um, that won't really be affected by the referendum. I mean, my laptop will be asleep if we leave or join. Probably it'll go off a little bit less if we leave, but either way, um, yeah, um, I really shouldn't have set a screensaver. But well, um, uh, what was I going to say? Yeah, I honestly think it won't be as bad as I'll say if we leave. Because we did survive outside the EU for a long time. Um, so I don't see why we can't now. If Switzerland and Iceland and Norway and a lot of other countries aren't in the EU, I'm pretty sure we will survive. I'm not saying as a guaranteed, but... Yeah, all the deputies though are saying stay, apart from um, Boris Johnson. Um, everyone is saying stay, that's famous. Every normal person is saying leave. I don't know what sign I'm on. If I was three months older, I would know a little bit more about it, but oh well. In other news, the best bin DLC is here for Stars Battlefront. I did mention why I haven't got it um, in my last vlog, um, but... I mean, looking at it, Dengar is insane. I can't wait to play with him. Also, the E4 is very good. Um, one of the guns. I love the best of maps. They look amazing. Like, they don't have one car for each but they have two. <laughs> um, but uh, the thing is, they have brought out a, pa brought out a patch, um, which has changed a few things for the better. Um, they made the interface a bit better, the partner system a bit better, and I have no longer got the pulse cannon equipped. I've changed it to the bowcaster, uh, because that is now insane. Oh my god. Um, basically, my relationship to the bowcaster before um, Tuesday, or Wednesday, Tuesday when the patch came out, um, was like, um, I used it about like once or twice, um, tried to get a kill with it, but literally, I think I probably got one kill with it uh, in like 10 games I played with it. In my first game, post patch, when I used a bowcaster, I got 10 kills with it, and I've been constantly getting about like 5 to 10 kills since. Um, in fact, my first game post patch, um, you'll see it a bit later, I'll put on my next batch of Battlefront clips, but I went 71 in 33. And about 10 of the kills were bowcaster kills. <laughs> um, yeah, I did have more deaths though, yeah, but 71 kills, man. Like, how did I even get that many? So, either way, I can't really think of a lot else to say. Um, so, let's get into the review. That's been one and a half years in the making. <laughs> um, yeah, I did 
want to review this movie earlier in the series, but I couldn't be asked to buy a movie until the other week in which I got it, and then I sat down to watch it yesterday. Um, or was it Tuesday? Was it yesterday? I can't remember. Oh, yeah, Tuesday, I think it was. Um, but anyway, yeah, it is Dawn of the Planet of the Apes. Um, so, yeah, it's going to be my opinions on that movie, which I wanted to review after reviewing Rise of the Planet of the Apes. But I never got around to it until today, so let's go. Right, so Dawn of the Planet of the Apes takes place a long time after Rise, about um, 15 years after. Um, humanity has been wiped off the map due to something to do with the Asperger's... Um, treatment they're working on in Rise of the Apes. Um, but yeah, the apes from Rise, who took over San Francisco, went into their own like part of the state and in, into the jungle, made their own like home village and yeah, kind of um breeded and created like kind of a whole functioning town with Caesar, um, the as Andy Circus character of the first movie, becoming um Andy Circus's ape from the first movie. Uh, becoming kind of like their leader, um, and yeah, the only other character who returned from the previous movie is the orangutan. Literally, only two characters return um, from Rise to Dawn, which is pretty extraordinary in my opinion. <laughs> uh, but yeah, either way, um, a few of the survivors are in San Francisco, and they end up stumbling across the apes and want to bargain with them so they can use their power. Um, but in in the process, one of the apes who was treated extremely badly by humans um, wants revenge and wants to plant war against the humans. Um, and in the process, the humans, um, one of them played by Gary Oldman, who you know I love, um, wants um, the apes to completely wiped off, doesn't want them there, and just wants the humans to survive, no matter what it takes. So, involves wiping out all the apes. So it's basically a case of extremists. It's no um hands again tired, it's no um two sides. It's really the extreme apes and the extreme humans and the normal humans and normal apes. Um so yeah, that's pretty much the story. So I must be honest here, I get the out of it out of them done first. I preferred Rise and Power of the Apes, and that is against the general consensus of the internet, in my opinion. Um, I don't know, I just think there's something about um, Rise, which is a more coherent story, and more seemed more genuine. Um, uh, I don't know. It did all have to do with like, the first half of Dawn. Rise had my attention the whole time. Um, perfect acting. Um... And yeah, I did give it a 10 out of 10, and I do stand by that. I think it is still a great movie. Dawn, though, the first hour, it's really slow. I don't really, didn't really find myself that invested in it. It was only in the second half, when all the action went down, and like all the infighting and amongst both species was... That's when it became good, but um, I'm not a big fan of the quiet stuff. I mean... I'd rather see him express himself with facial expressions than sign language, uh, the apes. Um, and also, um, I think uh, uh, they kind of build a community that's too out there. Like, it's too extreme for 15 years, if you know what I mean. Like, it, should, it could either be bigger or it could be smaller. I don't think it should be that size. If it's Dawn of Planet of the Apes, Planet of the Apes, not Town of the Apes. Um, but, you know, that's kind of a minor thing. Uh, but, yeah, it's pacing issues that let this movie down big time, especially in the first half. The human characters do fine. I mean, they're not that memorable. I don't remember any of them apart from Gary Oldman. Um, and, yeah, there's really... Um, the ones who are friendly to the apes, I mean, they just kind of arrive and don't really do a lot. They just kind of follow Caesar around and his, um, like, companions and allies and everything. Um, yeah, eh, they're not interesting. I think Caesar, again, Andy Circus does knock it out of the park. I mean, he is the best non-human human actor in the world. I mean, um, how can someone play so many motion capture roles and... Everyone on them feel original. I honestly don't know. Um, 
But either way, yeah, Andy Serkis does amazing as Caesar. Again, this movie, perfect facial expressions, and when he speaks, it is really meant for impact. I mean, I know I did kind of bash them being quiet, but when it's the spoken parts, if they were too numerous, it would have been flat dead. They use them just right, and that also accounts for the villain, which is Cobra, the other ape who is against humans. Um, you could definitely see where he's coming from, and they even managed to work out some good comedy. I mean, there's one scene in it that I was laughing my freaking pants off. It's so, um, yeah, it was funny. But um, he also didn't speak that much. When he did, it was impactful. Um, and the final eight bell is good, um, but. Um, there is something that happens in towards the end of the second act of the movie that kind of comes out of nowhere to do with the villain and Caesar. Um, and it kind of like um, slows the movie down a bit further. They could have maybe done the same thing in a different meaning. I'm pretty sure those of you who have seen the movie know what I'm talking about. It comes out of nowhere and it didn't really need to be there. It could have been swapped with something else. Um, and that would have made the movie a bit better. Um, but yeah, I didn't like this movie as much as the first one. Um, but it still has great performances and it does feel genuine. Um, I mean, for how out there it is, it did feel genuine. Um, it could easily be so bad as good. But, it like the first one, um, it did feel more genuine than it, like it was ever given credit for. Um, I didn't like it as much as the first one. Uh, but I still liked it. I'd say it is a good time now because shots required. Right, so thanks for watching the vlog. And I'm going to have a Tuesday vlog next week. Um, and yeah, sorry for this vlog's not being that good. I mean, I must be honest. I've not been feeling 100% all this week. Not been going out a lot. And yeah, uh, don't worry. I'll be better for my Tuesday vlog. Uh, so I'll see you then.